Hi everybody! It's been way too long since I last put out a video, so apologies to all of you who have been encouraging me to put something out and I just haven't been able to. But today I wanted to focus on a topic that is short and sweet, but hopefully something that's helpful for all of you seeing patients in the hospital usually. And that is talking about the difference between erythema multiforme and Stevens-Johnson syndrome. I think we can all agree that Stevens-Johnson syndrome is one of those diseases that just make us all nervous. It is one of the ones that we as dermatologists always like to think about as one of the dermatologic emergencies, but something that always confused me as a medical student and early on in residency is how do we actually make a diagnosis of SJS compared to erythema multiforme because they can look so similar. For those of you who might not know, erythema multiforme is a disease that's usually triggered by an infection, especially in adults. That might be HSV or mycoplasma, um, but a lot of different infections have been reported to trigger erythema multiforme. Steven-Johnson syndrome can also be by an infection, but much more likely from a drug. And there's a lot of typical drugs that cause this. We think about things like allopurinol, think about antibiotics, think about NSAIDs, and especially the anti-epileptics. The reason why it's important is because erythema multiforme generally is self-limited and supportive care will get you through it, but Stevens-Johnson syndrome can be deadly. It has a high mortality rate often, and so for that reason, the ability to differentiate between these two is super important. And the other thing to know is that maybe 20 years ago, we used to think of them as being on the same spectrum. People could have erythema multiforme and then slowly progress into having Stevens-Johnson or even TEN at the very end. So a quick reminder about what differentiates between these different entities. Erythema multiforme, certainly get a rash that looks like target lesions, um, but importantly, erythema multiforme minor doesn't have mucosal symptoms, whereas erythema multiforme major does have mucosal symptoms. Stevens-Johnson and TEN tend to always have mucosal symptoms, and Stevens-Johnson is less than 10% BSA, and TEN is greater than 30% BSA, and the between 10 to 30% is the SJS-TEN overlap syndrome. So how do you actually tell these two apart? Because they can both have similar looking lesions that look like targets, and they can both have mucosal symptoms. The most important thing here is to think about whether you have target lesions or target toy lesions, which I know sounds like you're splitting hairs, but it's so important when you're trying to differentiate between these two different diagnoses. Erythema multiforme tends to have target lesions, and Stevens-Johnson tends to have target toy lesions. What does that actually mean? A target lesion usually has three zones of color, an outside rim of red, a interceding circle of pale or lighter color, and then the center usually has another red dot. And then a targetoid lesion usually has two zones of color. The outside tends to be, again, red or kind of deep pink, and then the inside tends to be violaceous or purple or dusky, kind of grayish, and that's because that skin in the center is starting to die. And so for that reason, that's the main difference between these two. Some nuances. The target toy lesions in SJS tend to be a little bit more amorphous. It's not a perfect circle, whereas target lesions tend to be more likely a nice circular lesion. A nice reminder of how to actually remember this is just think of the logo for the store Target. I'm not being paid anything by Target for this. Actually, I probably think they don't want their logo associated with the skin disease. But the point is that if you remember the logo for Target, which is red, pale, red in the center, that's a perfect example of what a typical Target looks like. And a reminder, erythema multiforme. Versus atypical targetoid lesions that's more amorphous, two zones of color with darker, violaceous color change in the center because of that cell death, that is Stevens-Johnson TEN. And that's it. That's the main way that we differentiate between erythema multiforme and Stevens-Johnson syndrome. Obviously, the patient's history is helpful. If the patient just had a cold sore or if the patient just had a bout of what sounds like walking pneumonia, that's probably going to trigger us to think a little bit more about erythema multiforme. And if the patient just started allopurinol or was just given some uh, trimethoprim sulfa, we're certainly going to think about Stevens-Johnson a lot more. And at the end of the day, what are we gonna do for this patient? Well, erythema multiforme, some patients need to be admitted because they can't tolerate their POs, they can't keep their hydration up, and so they're in the hospital anyway. Stevens-Johnson TN is almost always admitted to the hospital. And sometimes for the difficult patients that are on the borderline where we really can't tell if it's EM major or Stevens-Johnson, we'll actually put them into ED observation or inpatient observation just so that we can keep a close eye on them to make sure they're not progressing into SJS. We're not gonna get into treatment because that's a whole other topic. I just wanted to focus today on the difference between a target lesion and a target toy lesion and why that's important for differentiating between erythema multiforme and Stevens-Johnson. 
Thanks so much for joining me. Hopefully I'll put out a couple more videos like this in the future. If you liked it, if you have other topics of interest, if there's something in dermatology you're not 100% sure about and you want some clarification, leave a comment below. Um, but thank you, welcome back. And hopefully this was a short and sweet but helpful video for all of you as you start to think more about dermatology wherever you might be practicing. Take care, see you later.